I'm off to uh, one of my favorite spots in my uh, city of Port Coquitlam. It's uh, just off a main road and it's a marshy area and it never disappoints. With the beautiful sunny days in the winter we get a chill factor as well. But it's not that bad today, it's only plus two. All is good because I'd rather have the sun and the cold and the beautiful blue sky to paint in. One of the things I know we're going to have to tackle this time around is the moving light. I'm here pretty early so the light's going to be moving pretty quick. By the time I'm finished I'm sure it'll be quite different. Changing light is good though because when you start off a painting you have a certain set design and as the sun breaks through it starts kissing different aspects with light and it can really benefit your end stage game of your painting. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Alrighty, so we're going to start off with a uh, sketch and layout. And what I'm doing here is I'm just isolating this 9x12 board into a 9x9 square, just because I like the idea of a composition of the square with this scene a lot better than the elongated 9x12. I decided to isolate it, draw a line, and now I'm going to sketch within that square area. And with that all done, I get uh, right into the blocking. And the good thing about the blocking is when you have the sketch in, blocking is so much more easier. You know where you want to go, you know where you want to put things. And so you just put everything in the way you see it. So there I started off with the shadows. I moved into the mid-tones of the grasses. More or less just trying to fill things in, trying to create a little bit of variation. Notice that my strokes are sporadic. They leave gaps, they leave lines, and that's the whole idea. And that's what helps create a sense of depth later on. Mind you, I will be adding a variation of colors and values and temperatures on top of those. But I have to start somewhere. And here I am moving on to the water. I'm doing the same thing. I'm blocking it in with a, a bluish grayish tone. I'll change that later. I got the value right. It was just the sense of chroma that I was missing. Here I up the chroma a little bit on the blue, but you'll see me up it even more later on after I get the reflections of the trees in. Now I'm trying to get the reflection of the different grasses into the water there. And it's just a process by process, looking for the shapes, looking for the shape of a light in the grass. I put it in and moving along the canvas, doing the same thing over and over. Doing a little bit of scratching to get the idea of grasses in. That's more of a reminder for myself to, to keep loose and make sure I get the feeling of grass. Adding a few lights that I see on the um, on the frost on that peninsula. Just as a reminder for myself, that peninsula will change quite a bit. As I progress throughout this painting, the frost melts and I can see more of the golden grasses through it. Now moving into some violets and those yellow grasses go so well together. Well, it's a cool violet or you can see me putting in a warm violet right now. It just helps the harmony of those grasses in the final piece. It's a build up process, right? Everything I'm building up from underneath to the top. And here I start adding the greens that I see within the foliage in the back and I'll add the trees after I add the reflections in the water. That way I can dictate the pattern and the design of the painting and those reflective trees first and then I can put them up into the forest later. Adding in some uh, different values, warms and cools within the peninsula. Trying to define the water area a little bit between the peninsula and the mainland. Here I am defining the logs that are bridging the gap in that little creek. And just changing that shape a little bit. I found it too even with the peninsula, so I wanted to bring that mass of grass down. It creates a nice angle inwards towards that little creek between the two land masses. Now after the blocking, I go into a phase called adjustments. And here I adjust the blocking that I just created. Note that it's still kind of a block-in because I haven't added the reflection of the trees yet. I'm adjusting the block-in, but I'm not refining it yet. Here I start with the pattern of the trees. I'm trying to look at the pattern in the water. I'm not too concerned about what the trees are doing in the land. It's the reflection in the water that is so interesting. And I'm using one size brush right now, but later on I'll move to a smaller size brush so I can get thinner trees in. And it creates a real sense of depth within there. Now I move up to the top to put the trees in there that I see reflecting in the water, trying to follow the pattern that I created in the water, of course. Moving into a little more darks. 
adjusting the value of the trees in certain areas, just where they hit the land mass, not so much as they come to the end of the painting, just to create a sense of gradation. Moving into the water, giving it a little more greeny feel. Because the water does change color between the large open space and where it hits the creek. And as I was progressing, that color was coming out more and more as the sun shifted during the day. Here I am with a smaller brush, putting in the smaller branches and trees that I see in that reflection. And it just helps add another reflection or another depth. Putting on some lights on the trees above, using that small round brush, putting some highlights on those logs to pass over. And using it to add some grasses just to keep it loose. At this stage, it isn't finished in terms of the grasses. It's more of a reminder of myself to keep it loose and, and airy throughout the painting. Now I'm adding more chroma into that water. You'll note that that paint that I'm putting on is the same value as what's beneath it. It just has more blue into it. It's more saturated. It really helps pop the oranges and the yellows out. Now with the adjustments of the blocking complete, we move into the refinement of the painting. Here I'm starting to put in the uh, letter value of the sky reflecting into the water, and which is nice because it, it hits the dark aspect of the bank. So we're going to get some really good contrast. And we're going to start to create a lot more interest in this painting by doing this. And I'll approach each area of the painting like this as I move throughout the refinement phase. Just working my way through the painting, putting the uh, putting the lights where I see them, kind of blending in that grass on the peninsula, putting in some warms. By now, that frost has started to melt and it has started to change. Kind of working on some smaller highlights within that water. You have to have your big shapes and you have to have your small shapes. Now you'll see me, I decided to put in a tree on the right-hand side, which is different from the scene that I painted before. And that tree really doesn't exist, but I put it there as an experiment to stop the person from coming off the right-hand side and really focus your attention direct toward that stream and those three logs that are crossing over that stream. And the reflection helps bring you up as well. I'm changing the highlights on the water there, giving it a little more sparkle, a little more life. As the light changes, you can really see this in the scene itself. And the final tweaks here, more or less filling in some darks, Trying to get a sense of grass, putting that one stroke on the left hand edge so you don't fall out of it. Now I'm using a small round brush, just dancing in some grasses there. Gives a sense of detail without putting in a lot of detail. Highlights onto the trees. Put a nice warm stroke on the grasses in the back, followed up by this purple stroke. And you can see there the warm and the cool really help vibrate in the scene. And putting those two strokes together since they're complementary creates a nice harmony within the painting. And just going through putting in some final touches of the lights within the water. And here I am signing the painting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Cheers.